In this video, I'm going to be talking about the new Gillette commercial. I can't remember the name of it, but basically it's talking about how men should be better. It's uh, encouraging them to not make sexist comments or um, tell their kids to suck it up. I mean, generally speaking, I support this commercial. I think it's brilliant. It's awesome. Today, I'm going to talk about how it relates to your marriage. And not only do I love it, I'm a husband. My husband loves it and lots and lots of other men. It has been getting some backlash because of, I don't know, I think people just say like, please don't tell me what to do. I am already a really awesome guy. And I agree with that. I think there's amazing men out there. But I think this, I, it was great. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it. I made me tear up a little bit. I was so inspired. So I really have been thinking about this a lot. This is a huge part of what I deal with as a marriage coach. So um, my name is Janet Denton House, by the way. I'm a marriage coach and I specialize in intimacy. Maybe Facebook will approve that. Um, let's go back. Let's go back to the feminist revolution. That was kind of my mom's generation. And what happened there? This is like a, you know, before that we had centuries of oppression of women and domination from men. But like the feminist revolution was really a, a point in history where women were saying, um, I'm not okay with this. I am ready to burn my bra. I am ready to start working. I am ready to have some sort of equality. Now, that was basically screw men. That's what they were talking about. So, you know, um, but it had to happen. Women needed to get angry. They needed to have some sort of revolution. They needed to band together. It was a period of time that was necessary. But then what's happened after that, really? I mean, in my generation, I don't see, I mean, there's some some effects that maybe I'm um, ignorant to because I was, you know, I grew up here, so I don't know in this generation, I don't know what happened before. I can work outside of the home. I, you know, relatively equal pay. I mean, there are some benefits, but there are some negative things. Like, for example, women now are required to do great careers, perfect houses. I mean, there, you know, there, there's an imbalance. But for the most part, things, a lot of inequalities stay the same. So now what? I, I think we're kind of in this really tumultuous period right now where nobody really knows their roles. Um, we're kind of trying to go towards sameness and not equality. And the, the reality is, let's just be honest about this, men are not equipped with a lot of the skills that they need because of how they were raised. And I think things are changing. And I really hope if you're watching and you're a mom that you and you're or your dad, you really are treating your boys differently. But for the most part, at age four, four, boys are touched less by their parents. Physical affection that they desperately need is now seen as dangerous because they can't, you know, it's if they're being seen as gay, it can actually um, it, it can actually be very dangerous for them. We're still living in a very homophobic world. I mean, it's it, so they just have to shut down, go within. They're not given emotional education. They're told to be quiet, suck it up. There's a lot of other flavorful words. <laughs> They're flavorful. <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Interesting words that people use uh, to describe that. Basically told to not be a girl. And so it's imprinted in them. They're, they're actually better than women and girls from a small age. Let's not even talk about pornography, which is extremely degrading and violent. I mean, 73 to 90%, 93% of men watch pornography. And so that's being drilled into their head, watch any video game. So look, we live in a super, super screwed up world when it comes to equality, when it comes to roles, when it comes, it's very confusing. So let's just all just give ourselves a break right now. But this is a really challenging time in history. But I also think it's a really exciting time because there's opportunity when things are shaken up, when there's kind of chaos, when people are just questioning. I think it's exciting. I think it's a time of change and transformation. So, and, and this is really where I think it's going to happen. I really think this is where we're headed. I have positive expectation about the future. 
is how can I not? Um, is that the pendulum will now start to come back to the middle. Middle. We do not, if we want to be pro women, we do not have to put down men. If we want to be pro men, we do not have to be put down um, women, because men and women are they we complement each other, and that is true equality. Complementing each other will bring us to unity. So that being said, let me talk about how you can take these principles into your marriage and what you can do as the wife to inspire this kind of pendulum um, middle ground, so to speak, where everyone is respected and valued for the certain skills that they bring to the relationship. The first one is to set clear and firm boundaries. You can be clear and kind at the same time. But if you continue to allow him to do things that make you feel uncomfortable and feel like there's something wrong with you and therefore you should not say anything, but actually are feeling unsafe and not like and not really protected by your husband during this experience, you're not being honest. And I hear from so many men who feel like they've just been, it's like they've just been bait, kind of like bait and switch or like because a lot of times women don't tell their husbands how they're really feeling because we're feeling guilty, we're feeling inadequate, we're feeling like we shouldn't and all of that stuff. So set clear boundaries. In the ad, it talked about um, sexual harassment. Quite, I mean, it, it showed, it depicted it. And sexual harassment happens in marriages very frequently by well-meaning, kind, loving men. I see it again and again in the work I do. I also see again and again women not being honest, not being clear about where their boundaries are. It took me 10 years to have my husband stop slapping my butt every time I bent down in the kitchen. But it really only ha it started to change when I said, I, when he did it, I would spin around, I would look him in the eye and say, I don't like that. And it was uncomfortable, and I didn't want to do it, and I felt frustrated every time he would do it again, but I just stayed firm. I spinned around, I looked him in the eye, and said, I don't like that. Because, again, it's not that they're children, it's, it's just that they really have not been taught to do the right thing. They really think it's a really a lack of emotional maturity, and it is a, just a lack of proper education about what women like. Look at any sex scene in TV. Look at any porn scene. Please don't watch porn if you aren't. But if you are, just you know what I'm talking about. They're taught that women like that, okay? So tell him your boundaries, please. The second thing is do not try to make him be a woman. I see this so often. Women will say, I just want him to express himself like I do. I just want him to see everything that needs to be done around the house like I do. I just want him to, you get the point, on and on it goes. He's not a woman, he's a man. Men have different and complementary skills. Do not try to make him into a woman. Here's a few things about your husband that you might not know. They need to feel reassured and re that they're resourceful in your life. They have a need to be resourceful. That's why they always try to solve your problems, even though you want them to just listen. Give him a problem to solve, all right? Like he use his capacity and his ability. Make it happen. If you have something that's weighing on your mind, tell him the problem and detach yourself from the solution. They can't stay in the house too long. I, they get antsy. Have you ever noticed this about your husband? It's from an evolutionary perspective. He needs to just get out of the house. Rather than making that wrong, rather than saying, why aren't you in the house more? Come back, come back, come back. Accept that he has different skills than you. They have a need for adventure. They struggle expressing themselves. They have diffuse awareness. They have single focus on a diffuse awareness. I could go on and on about this. The book I recommend always is the... Guide to How Men Think. Awesome book by Sean Smith. Great guy. My last tip. Believe in your husband to change. You might have to repeat yourself over and over again. You might have to make requests over and over again. You might have to 
um, try to see how his qualities and skills complement yours. But just please believe that he is a noble person, that he has this wonderful masculinity within him that is healthy and wonderful and glorious and spectacular. And try not to lump him into a category that you have made up in your head about men. Again, I think this is an exciting time. And I think that if you, I really think that um, marriage is like a little, it's a little micro climate <laughs> for the rest of the world. You've got men and you've got women. Not everyone's married to the opposite gender. That's just what I specialize in and what I'm really, really excited about. So of course, there's other relationships and marriages that exist in the world. But for, from my perspective, this is a great opportunity to create that unity and diversity when you have complementary skills and to see the nobility of your partner within him, believe in him, don't try to make it a, him a woman, and really please, please, please create firm boundaries because you can be the spark of change in your marriage and you can help him mature because of he just wasn't given that growing up. But hopefully we will change a cycle and we will start to see some actual lasting changes in the world. I'm excited you're along with me on this journey. I'll see you in my next video.